Today I want to talk to you about a way of reading Matthew 24 that seeks to retox it or look back on it with a new sort of view of what the Olivet prophecy or sermon uh, really means. So what do I mean by Matthew 24 retox? Simply put, it's a literally and figuratively way of reading the narrative here. So by literally, some people say that the first section of the sermon, which talks about the earth signs and so on, are literal in meaning, but the second part of the sermon, of the prophecy of Jesus, is to be understood figuratively, and that's to do with the heavenly signs. So for example, you have here, as you can see the first section, the destruction foretold, Jesus is asked a two-part single question. So the apostles ask him, when will these things happen? In verse three, what sign is there to your parousia, to your coming, and of the age? It's really one question in two parts. And then Jesus goes on to tell them about earth signs. So most people would take that literally, but then the second part of the sermon, the prophecy, is about the well-known topic of the Great Tribulation and of course the coming of the Son of Man on the clouds. So some people would read this in a non-literal sense, in a figurative sense. In other words, the first section, as I said, is literal, earthquakes and so on, plagues, pestilence. But the second part, they say, has to be read figuratively. So why do they do that? Because there's a big movement among Christians that is called historicism or preterism that this event, this prophecy has been fulfilled. Some believe in part, others believe in, in its full measure. So I wanna just give you a look at why this might not be right. I think it's simply bad exegesis. In other words, figures of speech don't equal a literal restoration of the kingdom and the resurrection of the dead. Now, those are clear teachings throughout the whole Bible, especially the Old Testament. That's what the whole gospel about the kingdom of God is about, a literal restoration of the kingdom of David. And that is tied to the resurrection of the dead. So you can go to Daniel 12, for example, and Daniel is the go-to prophet of Jesus, by the way, on his Sermon of the Mount, especially Daniel 7, where it talks about the Son of Man on the cloud. So if you read Daniel in its, full, in its fullness, you'll see that it's all about the kingdoms of the world coming under the kingdom of David, a restored kingdom of David, and this is tied to a resurrection of the dead, of the righteous and the wicked in Daniel 12. In the New Testament, coming on the clouds, that phrase always equals the parousia, what we call the second coming. So in Mark 14, Mark, uh, Matthew 26, Revelation 1. But the non-literal or the figurative view, as I said before, claims that coming on the cloud simply is a way of speaking about God's judgment coming upon the rebellious nation of Israel. But that's actually an incomplete picture of what the gospel is about. Yes, the gospel is about the Son of Man coming on the clouds and punishing uh, the rebellious people of God 
and that's actually a New Testament teaching as well when it says that judgment will begin with the house of God, that is the church now. But they leave out, it leaves out this historicist or preterist view, leaves out the, the good thing about that. From God's punishment comes the literal restoration, the resurrection of the dead. So it blurs Daniel's vision by splitting the image of the Son of Man coming on the clouds. So you only have one part of that image. That is, you only have the destruction of the people of God, which happened in 70 AD. And most, many Christians, a lot of Christian movements go to that particular date because it was the destruction of the temple. But we know that the restoration did not eventuate from that, which is the second part of the image. That's why I call it a splitting of the image of Daniel's vision. Also, why it's bad exegesis, Messiah comes with his angels or saints to govern all the nations of the land. Or I should say he comes with his angels and his saints, according to the uh, sermon on, on the uh, mount there. <clears throat> so it takes away from that simple fact that all the nations of the land come under the Messiah. Furthermore, the first thing to be said of the Son of Man is that he is an eschatological figure, that is an end time figure, a figure of the future. Uh, the Son of Man has not yet appeared, but in the last times, that is those eschatological, that eschatological period, he will be revealed and his coming, that is his parousia, means the end of the heathen human empires of this age. Remember the New Testament calls this the present evil age and the dawn of the kingdom of God. And this is from Mo Winkle and his book, He That Cometh, page 358. So all in all, it's, I think, bad exegesis when you read Matthew 24 in this separatist way the first part literally, the second part figuratively. I mean, we don't do that with uh, any book, by the way. You, you don't usually do that with a narrative you're reading, with a story you're being told. If you're being told this by Jesus, let's say you wouldn't take part, a big chunk of what he first says, literally, and then the second part figuratively, unless, of course, the writer or the speaker clearly tells you that it is.